Welcome to the Lightworkers Academy supplemental video on light anchors. So I'd like to take some time to tell you the story behind the light anchors and some of the things that we can do with these light anchors, these columns of light. So it began about 12 years ago, um, around 2010, that my sister was using light anchors for doing clearing work. Um, whether it was clearing a portal vortex in a home, um, just clearing dense energies in a home or in a physical environment. And so at that time, I was still very fresh to, to this consciousness work. And I was actually a water operator here in the Black Hills of South Dakota for several small municipalities. And simply I would go and test water and make sure that all the wells are functioning and um, the water quality tests are good and, and all that fun stuff. So when I first was told about light anchors and how my sister uses them, I decided I would give that a shot because I was getting into the energetics of water. And so the very first time that I created a light anchor, a column of light, I put it into a water tank, one of the municipal water tanks that I worked at. Um, and it was interesting because when I did this column of light, bringing it down from creation and up from the earth, kind of like what we do with the Trinity breath of breathing in that energy, becoming that column of light that is grounded and connected. Well, that's basically how you do a light anchor. And so the very first light anchor went into my heart space, and I just imagined this water tank, uh, this municipal water tower. And I simply did the Trinity breath with it. I brought in that light from creation source, and I brought up that light from the earth, and I brought both of them together. And I could see how it just, um, it lit up the water. The water just became bright, um, energetic. And I could see that, and then I could see how the water flowed through all of the water lines in the municipality. It came into a person's faucet. I could see where they took a glass of water, and that water was energized and bright and clear. They would drink that. I could see that doing shifts within their body, raising the frequency and vibration, and it also going out back into the earth um, through the drain and such. So... It was really profound, and I can still, you know, see that vision clearly of, of how it shifted that water energetically um, for that entire small municipality. So as a water operator in three municipalities that I had at the time, there were several wells. And so I started going around and putting a column of light into each one of these wells, as well as the water towers in each municip municipality. Well, with the original light anchors, the creating these columns of light, they would only hold for eight days. So basically, you create that column of light into that well or that water holding tank, and it will stay there until you put your attention back onto it again. And so for several months, that's what I was doing is I would go to a municipality every week. I would go through and just put my awareness, my attention back onto each of the wells and the holding tanks to keep that column of light anchored in until I could come back next week and put my awareness onto it again and recreate that column of light. So this went on for quite some time and I was asking my sister well gosh there's got to be an easier way that we can um, you know hold these columns of light in these bodies of water and wells um, without having to go back every week and so she's like well create a grid and so my path partner and I at the time we went to Hot Springs South Dakota which is near where I live here and there are several springs um, upstream in hot springs outside of city limits that feed that entire aquifer uh, for the city. So we went out and we created a column of light in one of those springs. Then we were calling in all of those that we worked with, the archangels, the consciousness of water, uh, the consciousness of the earth, and we started to simply ask for their assistance to help hold their attention 
onto this column of light that we created. So then with all of our attentions focused on this column of light, it would become permanent. So we took that original column of light, then we created another column of light. And we simply imagined, using our visualization, imagination, and intention from the heart space, we imagined that that column of light, that there was a, a light that connected to this other column. And so now we have created our very first two parts of that grid, which is our original column. And then we created another column and connected the light to it. And we kept doing this. We kept creating new columns. And every time we would create a column of light, we would watch that column of light connect to all of the other columns of light that we created in this grid system. So we actually created this on December 26th of 2012. It was the day after Christmas, um, and we were like, okay, let's do this. So this marks today, uh, December 26th of 2022. Uh, this is our 10-year or 11-year anniversary of creating the Columns of Light. Now, we called this original creation the Global Love and Gratitude Grid. Because not only were we creating these columns of light, but we were also asking for all of these higher potentials of energies to come into these columns of light and essentially into the water. That's why we brought in the consciousness of water to help to bring that water to its original crystalline structure. Um, we were bringing in the light. We were bringing in the frequencies and properties of love and gratitude. Um, everything that we would do with our own water, sending our gratitude into it, our love to the water, our light, basically would come through that column of light into, into that water. So the original Global Love and Gratitude Grid, which we created at that time, um, we started to really promote that. We actually have a website for the globalloveandgratitudegrid.com. And for a while, we were mapping out with the help of people all over the world we were mapping out where people were putting these columns of light and connecting them. And it became worldwide that people were creating columns of light and connecting it to our original grid system. So over the course of, of years, I was driving all over the country and every time I would see a water tower, I would anchor a column of light into it and connect it to this global love and gratitude grid. Well, then we started to work with other things such as cell phone towers, as cell phone towers became more and more popular at that time. So we started to anchor columns of light into cell phone towers. And when we would do that, we would see that that cell phone tower and all of its transmissions that it would send out were then shifted. It would be a beneficial energy and it would contain those frequencies of love and gratitude. And then for a while, we were also doing electrical substations. But at the time, we weren't able to connect this global love and gratitude grid into electrical substations like Hoover Dam or any of those large fenced-in areas that you see that are connected to electrical grid systems for transmission lines, your, your large power lines. That, that grid that we created for the water and also for the cell phone towers now just was not able to energetically hold with that electrical grid. So what we did for electrical grids at that time, now everything's changed since then, and we'll go through the process, the progress of this. But at the time, we would create a column of light for that electrical substation, and we would invite in some being in the highest and best good to step in and hold their attention onto that column of light so that that column of light would stay there for as long as was necessary or in the highest and best good. So after some time, I believe it was 2015, that we were doing a lot of other grid work all over the planet. And at that time, Gaia, the energy of Earth, she actually released, she sloughed off all of the old grid systems that no longer serve the planet in the way that we were co-creating with the planet and all these energies at the time. 
Gaia released all of those old grid systems that we were clearing. And she adopted the global love and gratitude grid as an organic earth grid. That was super, super exciting. And so throughout the years, we just kept adding to that grid. Now, as we moved along, we found the golden fire. Oh, no, sorry. I won't take a step back yet. At one point in time, we were looking for a way to create dowsing rods, um, the L-shaped dowsing rods, which I meant to have a set here. But the dowsing rods, um, we, we would be able to, with consciousness work, go in and move geomagnetic lines, clear portal vortexes, close them or clear them. Um, we'd be able to work with underground streams, uh, rivers, fissures, uh, the geopathic stress lines, and all of the different geomagnetic grids. We were able to clear them or move them just through consciousness work by being in the heart space, visualization, imagination, and intention. And then you can go through and douse and find that the work that you did took and it, it is still held to this day in these places that we've moved geomagnetic lines. Um, so throughout that time with, that we were looking for, um, that we were actually doing this work through consciousness. And then somebody approached us and asked us to create dowsing rods for them. And so my sister Brenda and I were looking at a way to create how we create with our etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspects of the tools. So Brenda and I were going to create our etheric template to a new dowsing rod that basically would bring in all of that consciousness work that we were able to do, bring that in as potentials and possibilities within the etheric template. So then when somebody had a dowsing rod that was connected to it by the sacred measures, that they then could play in those same fields of potentials and possibilities of moving, clearing, geomagnetic lines, portal vortexes, doing all of that work that we do with consciousness uh, by simply being in that field and using a simple intention from there. So as we were looking for, well, as we were creating that etheric template, we found an ancient etheric tool that we simply call the golden light rod. It was this higher dimensional golden light rod. That's what it looked like. And it had color and sound associated to it. So it was not just golden. There was rainbows of colors just emitting off of this tool. Well, we took that tool and we anchored it into our etheric template so that it was in our original dowsing rods. So... That was really a game changer for us in creating columns of light because now when you create a column of light, you could do that other work that we were doing with geopathic and geomagnetic lines. So now you could anchor a column of light into a portal vortex and it would either close it or clear it. You could anchor that column of light into a building that had all kinds of geopathic and geomagnetic issues and it would clear them. It would either clear the geopathic and geomagnetic lines or move them around. And it even worked with underground waterways. So this became another step in the columns of light. As we progress, we found the golden fire energetic, which we have in our golden fire rings. Now the golden fire energetic is one that can clear the 5G millimeter weight millimeter wave even. Um, the golden fire energetics, as we've discussed here in, in our lightworkers um, school, is, is that golden fire can even cross over ghosts, waywards. It can bring in that remembrance and that healing and more light to every person that comes into that field. So when we put the golden fire into these columns of light and we also put that into our dowsing rods and into the golden fire and light wands that we created because for a while we have the golden light wands and those light wands were simply connected to that ancient etheric tool that could do the work of moving and clearing geopathic and geomagnetic lines and then 
And of course, it does a whole lot more. It clears timelines and realities for the person using it. A lot of work that it does for the person and the soul that is utilizing that tool. And that tool can only be wielded by the soul. Um, so it's always in the highest and best. It is a powerful tool. Um, but it is your soul that's in charge. We are the grounding spot, the anchor for this tool. Okay, so with that um, golden light rod was our first one. Then when we found that golden fire measurement, we put that golden fire into another length of this rod. So now it is the golden fire and golden light wand. And this again is connected to the etheric templates, the higher dimensional aspect of the tools. And it's that that which the, the soul wields is that higher dimensional aspect. While the human holds this physical anchoring point in our physical reality that we're working in. So golden fire and light became that that whole new paradigm of anchoring columns of light and so i've taught mm, countless people through either workshops live online or through all the videos that we put out there on anchoring those columns of light with the golden fire after you receive that sacred heart activation so some of the next steps that came with anchoring these columns of light um <clears throat> We're, uh, well, the next step actually, which comes, is what we're going to be doing in session two of our Lightworkers Academy, which is working with the energy of the wisdom, the wisdom and the chalice energetics. And so then once we put the wisdom and the chalice energetics into these columns of light, they do exponentially more. So what do you do with a column of light and why is it beneficial? Well, a column of light is a, it's like creating um, light chambers. It's, it's creating a higher vibrational space that can be used for healing, clearing, releasing, um, anything that you would do when you were stepping into that higher vibration, connection, clarity, all of that. So it's creating sacred spaces. And it's creating sacred spaces not only for yourself, because we talk about how you can put light columns. Um, you know, in our workshops, we'll have people put a light column into their home, a small three foot wide light column. That way they can play with that and feel the tangibility of that light column by stepping in and out of it and just feeling that difference in that space. Some of the other ways that we did throughout this past uh, 10, 11 years with these light columns is in classes, we would, do, um, we would use dowsing rods and we'd find, um, we'd take a bottle of water or a pitcher of water and we would find how large the energy field is of that water. And usually we would find that that water had a field only maybe about 12 to 18 inches out is about how how big of a field, energy field, that vessel of water would produce. So as a class, we would do light anchors and we put a column of light into that vessel of water. After we drop that column of light in there and we let that water sit in there for just moments, then we go and we douse to find the energy field of that water. That energy field would expand anywhere from 30 feet to 200 feet out is what we found in these various classes. And we would do this as a group. We would douse, um, we would individually douse where, how far out we would find that line. And it was usually anywhere from 30 to 200 feet out, just depending on um, the class we were working with and how big of a field that produced. So we were, be, we were able to show with dowsing on how it affects the energy field of water. Um, let's see. And then with the dows, with anchors of light too, we would teach how to anchor those again into any of the cell phone towers and into old haunted houses, into graveyards, into um, ER rooms and hospitals. Anywhere you go where you find dense energies, energetic attachments, um, just disharmonious energies, whether it is um, just dense energies of consciousness, ghost waywards, entities, portal vortexes, geopathic, geomagnetic, or whether it was EMFs, 
um, you, you basically when you anchor a column of light into these spaces and places, it begins to clear and shift those entire all those places. So it became to where we could create a single column of light and not have to connect it to an entire grid system. Uh, because when we're creating these columns of light now, we're just creating a single column of light that comes from source creation to the heart of the earth. The earth holds that anchor of light and you as creator holds that other anchor of light. And what we are doing in our first two classes here with the Lightworkers Academy is we are basically working at creating these fields, attuning and activating ourselves to where we can then step in and when we create these columns of light now, we're able to put in all of this extra into these fields. Whether it is that golden fire of the sacred heart or whether it is that understanding in space and knowledge of that wisdom field or that chalice energetics. And we're then able to put that into these columns of light so that these columns of light are more refined and, and broader in what their potentials and possibilities are. And then these columns of light do not have to be connected to a grid because basically the entire planet is acting as a grid holding these lights in place. And of course, when you create these columns of light, you are raising the light quotient of the planet and anybody who goes through these columns of light. A lot of times, well, all the time when I drive down the highway and I see things, whether it is an old haunted house, you know, a house that just feels dense energy, or a neighborhood with a lot of houses that just feel dense, or a cell phone tower, or your municipal water tank, or a church, or a hospital, whatever it is, I anchor columns of light. And there are hundreds of thousands of these columns of light all over the planet now as we've been doing this for about 11 years and been teaching people. And so many people do this as their daily routine as well. And it gets to be at the point to where you can create those columns of light super simple and easy. For me anymore, as I drive around, anywhere I look where I feel like there needs to be a column of light, I can do it in a blink because I've, I've gone through that process enough to where I can just be column of light and there it is I can feel it and see it and so what I love to, where I love to place columns of light too is as I'm driving and I find a bridge that goes over any body of water like a river um, I will put columns of light into the highways that way anybody that drives through there they receive the, the benefits, that remembrance, that, that moment of just, um, you know, that brightness and clarity. And it is also affecting the water. So when you put that column of light um, into the water and it's flowing, it flows and all of the water that flows through there is shifted in vibration and changes basically that entire river. So these columns of light are really powerful. Um, and your imaginations really is the limit on how to utilize these columns of light. And so I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of an introduction today. So that way, once we get into doing the work in our sessions, that we don't have to go through, you know, all this description and, and talk of the journey. But I just want to try to give you a basic of columns of light and what this global love and gratitude is. And again, that global love and gratitude grid, which we created 11 years ago, um, it's still a part of the planet, but when we create columns of light, we don't necessarily connect into that grid. We're creating individual columns of light wherever we go. And these columns of light will stay. And that's the thing. As we begin to work in these higher fields, we have a lot more support. The earth, for one, is holding that anchor in place. And so we don't need to go back through and revisit this column of light every eight days and make sure that it stays. It will stay there for as long as is needed in the highest and best good. So these columns of light are profound, and I really look forward to us all stepping in and playing with these.
Now, if you do want to check, because um, we're not going to be doing columns of light until January of 2023 is when we're going to begin doing our third session on columns of light. But if you would like to get a jump on that or, if, you know, and you might have already, um, if you go to either the global love and gratitude grid.com or our YouTube page or twistedsage.com under resources, there's a lot of places where you can find light anchoring. But Light Anchoring 3.0 is one of the newer videos. I believe that one is still about five years old. Um, but Light Anchoring 3.0 is one of the newer videos on Light Anchoring that I would suggest for you to look into if you want to get a jump start on Light Anchoring. So thank you for being a part of this class. And again, um, going to twistedsage.com if you'd like to sign up for the Lightworkers Academy if you have not already twistedsage.com the home page scroll down to the bottom and under the blogs you will see um, the Lightworkers Academy and that's the blog page there that will be posting our links to our newest um, our newest webinars that are coming up as well as the YouTubes of all of our past webinars uh, that have to do with this particular class. So anyway, I hope you enjoy and we will see you this coming Wednesday for our session two. And otherwise, thank you for being here and Happy New Year. And yeah, thanks for choosing to do this work because um, when we anchor a column of light again, it raises the light quotient of the entire planet and it affects everybody who comes into contact with that column of light. So this really is a, a great tool and a great service that we offer. And it also helps us because it begins to empower you to be able to shift what you perceive as dense and dark energy. And that's really what this is all about. This entire class is us being able to shift energy. So we will see you soon. All right. Thank you.